Good morning, March the 4th, 2016. Time to get started on another trading today, and today is a Newsday uh, trading situation. And I think this is the second biggest uh, news day of the month. I think March 16th will be the biggest news day of the month because of the FOMC announcement. Um, in February, <coughs> the Fed's ability to raise interest rates was taken off the table. Uh, it's back on the table now with a strong, recent strong economic data. So what the Fed wants to see um, today is um, a nice non-farm payroll number. Probably they'd like to see it higher than 190. If they're going to raise rates, they'd like to see hourly earnings going up, uh, and they'd like to see the average work week go up. So 190K is where non-farm payroll is. 4.9, and this is where the whipsaw comes from. Uh, the news algos read it, then they read the second line, unemployment, and then if there's going to be a whipsaw, that's where it comes from, the difference between unemployment and the non-farm payroll. Private non-farm payroll, 183, nobody pays any attention to that. Hourly earnings plus two-tenths, which is the default. 34.6 average work week, which is the default. Trade balance, minus 43 not 43.9 that'll be lost in the news no one will see it except for zero hedge and then Baker Hughes rig, rig count and North America was uh, rig count was 677 last week and they expect it to be lower so there's the focus know the news and you have the trade now because you can't know the news with certainty, 100% certainty. If you have a bottom line and you have a strong feeling about the news, don't trade size. Put something on so you can reap the reward. There's no liquidity upon the announcement. So if you're not willing to take a position before the news hits, then you're left with um, how do I take advantage of the news, etc. And we have a news day trading um, strategy that works pretty well. Let's say the news hit and it took treasuries higher, i.e. a lower number than forecast. The market will correct and on this first correction you enter the market, in this case long, with the news to see if it can take out that high. And if that high does not come out then you exit the trade. This requires a nimbleness. That when you look at the bar where the news hit, you've got the news, you got the value area low in this case, and then you got the mode mean right here. Well, the first place to get in is the mode mean, the second place to get in is the value area low, and the third place to get in is where the news hit the market. And you'll be surprised, usually after the buying or selling is over and the profit taking ensues, uh, several hours later, and I do mean several, uh, we have a chance to come back and uh, get to the pl spot where the news hit the market. So, leaning against the mode mean is the um, whichever one's first or closest to you, or closest to the bar's high in this case. You'd lean against it with a limit buy. Second place to enter would be a limit buy against the value area low, and then the third place to enter would be on the news. And if you don't ex take out that range, uh, the high, you don't extend the range, excuse me, and take out this high, you exit the trade. Now, that requires nimbleness, it requires quickness, it requires uh, just single mindedness. I'm going to enter at the mode, I'm going to enter at the valley, very low, whatever price point you pick. And if you're not capable of doing that, um, you don't have those skills, remember the four stages of market development. First is the market makes a move, two, you find a price that cuts off the buying. Three, the market comes back in, in this case, and will find out where support really is. And then the market moves into development, where you get lower highs and lower lows. And with the 10-year, you're trading this development, this mode right here, plus or minus 3.30 seconds. So that's the way to handle it. Now, if there were no news, uh, uh, we got a P. If 
volume wise and we've got a um, a B TPO wise so the correct split is M which gives us a P and we've got this move out of the middle so we're right at resistance so without news we're selling failure to take out 20 to 24 that's sell 1 then 2731 would be sell 2 on the buy side um, this 12 area so 9 to 13 buy 1 1 to 5 buy 2 and we'll pick up those price points after the news hits Uh, the maroon stripe is the mode. Uh, by definition, that is value. It's the price at which the most contracts have traded, Billy. And how are you this morning? Has spring sprung where you live? It has up here in Kansas. I imagine it has for you, too. Only 75. Well, we might make 70 today. Hopefully we won't have the winds. Uh, it's too warm for this time of year, uh, so... Uh, when we get these 70 degree temperatures, we usually have uh, the accompanying winds too. Not 70 miles an hour, but uh, definitely in the uh, 20 to 30 area. Okay, looking at now development on this contract is plus or minus 630 seconds. If you want to take that, that strategy. And that, that's pretty lucrative trading when it's all said and done. Right now on this one, we'd be selling failure. Last rotate up, uh, stopped uh, pretty much at 23. Uh, so we'd be fel selling failure to take out 20 to 24. And then 31s to 03s for sell two. The buy side, we have these single prints down here. So five to nine, buy one. And then we'll make 25, 29 for buy two. Okay, Rich Genders will be on today again at 12 Eastern talking about his approach to trading crude and what he saw and how he handled the situation today. Very, very informative. I know it was recorded yesterday. Rich hasn't posted. I don't see where Rich has posted that yet, the link, but as soon as we get it, we'll put it up. Okay, Gold. Uh, we said 75 was the next stop. Why 75? It is a market number. You know, thirteen hundred bucks, twelve seventy-five, twelve fifty, twelve twenty-five, twelve hundred. Um, everybody's talking about how gold is broken out twenty percent higher than its low December lows. So by definition, being twenty percent higher, it's in a bull market. So here we are at sixty-seven. Uh, if the numbers come in as forecast, gold should sell. And you know, probably prime buy areas a buy areas is fifty area. We're a long ways away. So sixty one, fifty nine by one, fifty, fifty two by two. On the uh, sell side right now, sixty nine, seventy one, sell one, and where we were yesterday, seventy four, seventy six, sell two. And development in uh, gold would be probably plus or minus three bucks trading development. Okay, the numbers if as forecast should take the euro lower. show an economy stronger than theirs and um, like we said this 110 level 11010 uh, pretty good sell zone so 
110 even, cell 1. At this high volume number up close to 25, cell 2, 25. Uh, on the buy side, um, 950. But I mean, it is a news trade here too. The nine and a quarter. Okay, crude oil, they're attributing, um, and, and it, it can take five to eight bucks to unwind the entire market, uh, long or short in crude oil. Depends on how fast it, how fast the unwinding takes place. So they're attributing all this strength now to a short covering rally. So if we take a look at um, where the market was of late on our F1 screen, uh, this rally started at the lows of uh, 20, 26 bucks, so eight bucks takes us to 35 plus. So uh, again, this 35 area, the area that we like to sell, is uh, still holding up pretty well. Uh, so our sell remains. 35, 35 and a quarter. Now, if you want a market that's not going to be impacted much by unemployment, it's this one. And that's part of the appeal of trading crude oil. You don't have to screw with all these damn fundamental economic announcements, uh, etc. Uh, 34, 34 and a quarter by one. And then 33.50, 33.75 by two. And on to the ES, everybody's favorite contract. Again, the ES, I, I think the primary reason for trading the ES uh, is or are people's familiarity with the stock market. It's held in our face every day, and it's one of the first things that's reported in every news uh, forecast. So where are we headed right now? we got a low volume number at 96. We've got the round number at 2,000. We have our attractor up here at 2,007. So structurally, we get to this 96 area. Limit sell at two, 2,007 would be the trade. As it stands right now, resistance is at 95. So sell one is going to be 95 to 2,000. I believe they're going for stops above 2,000. So a 1999.50 limit sell would work. Should have some breathing room. Um, then the second sell zone would be five to ten. Okay, ten points. If you want to trade um, scoop orders, ten points above or below the market it works pretty well uh, in the E-mini. And if you want to trade development, it'll be plus or minus five points uh, from wherever that development is. Uh, again, there just isn't any liquidity. Um, in the market when the news hits, and why will five? Why why is ten points a good place? It's a quick quick five hundred bucks for those that had the guts to uh, take the trade, and a lot of that guts are in the professional trading community, and they do take profits. So. Uh, Ninety-five to two thousand sell one like the nineteen. 99.50 cell or the 2007 cell. Uh, on the buy side, 85 to 90 and 75 to 80. And it's just it's a news day trade, so most people will trade development. They won't screw with taking a chance on entry that way. And it does require 
one being pretty nimble to trade that first that first bar, the first reaction to the news. Okay, I'll take a bit to get everything up and posted. I'm going to get busy on that. I will be with you as soon as possible. We'll be there on the news in a few.